Joining me right now is former Speaker of the House and Fox News contributor Newt Gingrich. Newt, thanks very much for being here. You've watched this uh, many times, uh, cycles. Tell me what you think about the DNC so far two nights. Well, I mean, look, I think, first of all, I think it's ironic that Bill Clinton is promising us a president who will go to work uh, when we can barely get Biden out of the basement. So he, he certainly doesn't behave like somebody eager to go to work. Um, <clears throat> second, I think the most important characteristic is the collapse of the audio, of the viewership. Uh, they're down, I think, 25 or 30 percent. And my guess is it's just going to keep getting worse uh, because it turns out that a virtual convention is fairly boring uh, and that, frankly, uh, there are not that many people excited by Joe Biden. I think that uh, the Democrats have not yet come to grips with the reality that they may have picked a ticket uh, with Biden and, and Harris that has no popular appeal. Its only battle cry is defeat Trump. Uh, and people just, I think, are going to find very, very low turnout on the Democratic side this fall. And you're seeing that not just at Fox News, but across the board, every single network uh, has had a substantial drop in the number of people compared to 2016. Mm. What about these Republicans for Biden, Newt? I mean, you've got uh, John Kasich on Monday night. Last night, former Secretary of State Colin Powell among the growing list of GOP members supporting the vice president. Here's Colin Powell. Got, you, got, got to get your reaction. I support Joe Biden because beginning on day one, he will restore Americans' leadership and our moral authority. He'll be a president who knows that America is strongest when, as he has said, we lead both by the power of our example and the example of our power. Well, Powell joins former Ohio Governor John Kasich. Uh, Cindy McCain also supported Biden. Newt, your reaction? Look, I think Trump is a very disruptive president who has profoundly changed American policies. And I think if you're part of the traditional foreign policy establishment, as Secretary Powell is, uh, you find this very difficult because this is, in fact, a repudiation of 18 years of fighting in Afghanistan without victory. It's a repudiation of how many young Americans have died and been severely wounded without victory uh, in, in, in Iraq and elsewhere. And it's a very different approach, a much tougher approach. So I think that that's, that explains the sort of national policy establishment. I think Kasich's just sad. Uh, Kasich was a great contributor to getting a balanced budget. He was a good governor of Ohio, but he got very bitter uh, when he suddenly discovered that voters didn't hold him in the same esteem that he held himself. So he's sort of yeah. in the Bill Crystal wing of, you, know, you don't love me, so I'm going to hate you. Uh, and I, I thought having Kasich on actually probably reduced Kasich's standing more than it helped Biden. You know, it's interesting to see Sally Yates up there talking about how bad Trump is. Meanwhile, we're still questioning how much she had to do with the spying on uh, the illegal spying on Trump's campaign. She uh, obviously spoke in front of Lindsey Graham's committee, but we're waiting for justice from the Durham probe. Former FBI lawyer Kevin Kleinsmith is expected to plead guilty today for falsifying that email so that the FBI could monitor former Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. Uh, that Senate Intel Committee uh, came out with the report once again reiterating no evidence uh, of President Trump colluding. People like Paul Manafort uh, creating opportunities for Russia, uh, according to this report. But later on in the week, as I've reported, Durham is going to be interviewing CIA Director John Brennan uh, over his role in the Crossfire Hurricane inquiry. Newt, do you think we're going to get accountability here? Uh, let me just say, say that John Brennan continues to dig in uh, as uh, his role in this whole spy uh, situation around Trump's campaign continues to uh, be looked at. Look, I think there are several books coming out now that outline the, the scale of the plot against the president. And it clearly goes all the way up to uh, President Obama and Vice President Biden. And if you think about the idea that the president of the United States and the vice president, with the head of the CIA, with top people at the FBI, were consciously engaged in spying against the new president and trying to disrupt and discredit his administration. It's a much bigger scandal than Watergate was. Uh, and I think it's it had taken every effort of the anti-Trump media 
to, to try to tone this down and calm this down. But the evidence is, and, and Yates, of course, is a good example of this. Uh, the evidence that's coming in, that there were meetings in the Oval Office where this was being discussed, uh, and that they were consciously looking for ways uh, to trap and destroy General Flynn as a first step towards trapping and destroying the president. Uh, and I, I think it's astonishing that people have not seen how really deep a threat this is to our democracy and the rule of law. And I suspect now, as Durham continues to dig this stuff out, that we're going to find a number of people just plain broke the law. And I hope that the Justice Department will have the courage uh, to go after people no matter who they are. And I do think both the President Obama yeah. and Vice President Biden bear substantial responsibility for this. Uh, and I think it's, it's a real problem. Well, I've written about it. I've written about it as well, Newt. My book will be out in October, and it's chapter two, The Coup That Failed, uh, because it's amazing to me that you don't hear a peep about it on the left. You do not hear the outrage at all. Uh, they're all sticking together, and that really is a sad thing, to not call out the wrongdoing at the top of the FBI that we know has occurred. Well, I mean, what you've seen is the collapse of facts and their replacement by fairly insane beliefs. If you, if you look, for example, at the whole Postal Service thing, it, it was a mass hysteria. I, I interviewed uh, the author of a book on, on the madness of the crowd, and it's amazing how um, you see people do things that are hysteria. They have nothing to do with facts. And on the yeah. left, they are so hysterical about Trump that uh, they, they believe things that are crazy. And this postal thing is the most recent example. Right. But it's been going on month after month after month. And it's part of why the country has, a, yeah. I think, a real feeling of polarization and almost derangement on the left. Well, that's uh, right. Where facts literally have no meaning. What, uh, what uh, matters is the latest right, crazy thing the you thing. want to believe. It, it, it doesn't matter that Trump was spied on. It's Trump. It doesn't matter that there were two uh, out of four FISA warrants that were unlawful. It's Trump. It doesn't matter. I mean, that, that's the thinking of the left. Uh, it's, it's really, it's a sad situation. Newt, it's great to get your insights as always. Thank you, sir.